In this video, I'll be painting the brand new Scout Squad from Kill Team Salvation. A huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending me this for free so that I can review it and also create some content for you. Now, I'm going to paint these Scouts as the classic Blood Angels, so let's get painting. Now, the first thing I've done is primed the minis with Xandri Dust Spray. The reason I've done that is because it's going to be really easy to paint all the other parts, whereas if I primed these black, it's going to take quite a few coats of Xandri Dust to get a nice, even coverage over the fatigues. Now if you're going for dark fatigues, black's fine. The first thing we need to do is paint all of that lovely red armour in. So the colour I'm going to use for this is Mephiston Red. Now this covers over the Xandri Dust really really well. You can get away with just one coat. That being said, don't put it on too thickly because we don't want to make too many mistakes around those areas where all the fatigues are. Once that's finished, it's time to paint in all of the black elements. Now there's a fair bit on the model, so we've got things like the boots, the weapon casings, and also the chest eagles, if you can see them, and some of the tubes and pipes on the models as well. Take your time with this, because this is a very powerful colour, and it can cause you to have to go back and cover up some of your mistakes. Now, I'm using AK Black. You use whichever black you want. Now, it would be really easy to paint all of the leather black as well. But I don't want to do that. I want to paint this brown so there's a little bit more interest on the model. Now, the colour I'm going to use that is Dryad Bark, which is a nice desaturated dark brown. So paint this over all the belts, all the pouches and all the straps. Again, be really careful around those bits that you don't want to get dark, such as the fatigues. Next up, I'm going to base all of the silver colours with Surcoat Silver. Now, if you haven't got Surcoat Silver, you can use Lead Belcher, you can use Dark Aluminium from Vallejo. I really like the Surcoat Silver. I think it covers quite nicely. You don't have to thin it too much. I find Lead Belcher a little bit lumpy sometimes. So we're looking for all of the silver bits, such as any mechanical parts on the weaponry, uh, as well as any bolts and studs, and even some buckles. When that's dry, we're now going to shade the entire model apart from the fatigues. Now the colour we're going to use this is Null Oil. Now this is going to work quite nicely, but you do have to keep an eye on it and not let it pull too much in the recesses. So for things like the leather pouches uh, and the metallics, you don't have to worry about it too much because it'll look okay on these. But where we're doing the red armour, we only really want it in the recesses. So paint it into those recesses. Then if you need to, clean your brush off and just soak away some of the excess so it just stays in those darkest parts. And I'll show you how we highlight it back up later but this is just to get some nice shadows on the go to start with while you're waiting for that null oil to dry i just want to let you know that i've done a full review on the kill team salvation box set on my patreon it's free to watch you don't have to sign up you just click the link in the description i'd love to know what you think about my box reviews i'm going to be doing plenty more of them when that's completely dry we can now start to highlight the model so the first color we'll do is silver and i'm going to highlight this with chrome from vallejo model air now, you can use Stormhost Silver if you prefer. Any bright silver will work absolutely fine here. I just prefer this one. So all I'm doing is make sure I've got a little bit on my brush, and I'm just dragging it along those parts of the model that I want to catch the most light. And this is a really nice, easy way of highlighting silver because it does give you a very nice, crisp highlight as well. So if you need to blend it a little bit because it might be too bright, then you can use the Surcoat Silver underneath as well and just move it up uh, and into the, the brighter silver colour. And this will give you a nicer transition. We'll highlight all the leather with Gorthor Brown. Again, this is a nice, lighter, desaturated brown colour. And all we're going to do here is make sure we've got a little bit on our brush and just pull the brush along the edges of the model. Luckily, all the leather parts of the model do have quite sharp edges. So we can just move the brush along them and get nice, crisp highlights. If you want to add a little bit of texture and you can do so with some short, sharp lines, that might make things look nice as well. Now, I really do hope you're enjoying my content. If you are, why not subscribe by clicking that button there. Leave a like on the video so that others can find it. And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. So I'm going to highlight all of the black next. I'm going to do this a little bit different to how I'd normally do just sharp edge highlighting. Uh, we're going to do some area highlights to start with just to ease the colour transition. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a very dark grey. Now, I'm using German Grey from AK, but you can use Eschen Grey if that's what you've got. If you haven't got anything like that, just mix some black and white paint together until you've got a really dark grey. All I'm doing is I'm focusing this on the areas that are going to catch the most light, taking into consideration the shape of the model. So for the sergeant shoulder pads, this is going to be a round type highlight. 
Uh, and for things like the cloak on the sniper, we're just going to brush this all over those folds, which are going to be uh, catching the most light. For all the boots, we're going to highlight the majority of them. But again, just keep thinking about which bit are going to catch the most light. When it comes to things like the shoulder pads and the folds on the cloak, we do maybe want to blend them a little bit. So all I'm going to do is just paint the grey colour on and then just take the black colour in and paint that in the shadow and just mix them together on the model. Now this is a foot, this is wet blending. It's not overly complicated and I'm not overly fussed about being super, super smooth in a crisp blend. All I want to do is just ease that transition a little bit. We'll start the sharper edge highlighter now, and the colour I'm going to use for that is Dawnstone, which is a nice bright grey colour in comparison to everything else we've used. So it's really important you haven't got much on your brush with this, and you want to drag it along the sharp shapes of the model. So the boots are the perfect example for this, where you've got lots of hard black leather. So just pull it along there, and you'll get a really nice crisp highlight. If it's a little bit too stark, you can always dull it down or just paint over it or mix in some of the dark grey with the Dawnstone, just to make it slightly less uh violent in terms of the uh the way it looks when it comes to things like the cloak for the sniper you might want to mix this with the darker gray so it's not quite as stark as it looks just on on the black highlights there but essentially all we're doing is we're just dragging it along the shape of the model for the shoulder pads on the sergeant again we're going to paint small circles and we're just going to mix in some of the darker gray from underneath and we're just going to go back and forth between the two until we've got something that looks like a nice blend and we're just thinking about where the light is going to land if you don't feel confident doing this you don't have to do it you can just edge highlight the shoulder pads like you've edge highlighted the rest of the armor i'm just showing you a little bit of a different way and if you don't want to try it on your model try it on some spare parts there's loads of spare parts in this kit that you can practice on and you can practice on any other part of a model as well Okay, now it's time to highlight the red armour. We're going to do this in a very similar way to how we did the shoulder pads on the sergeant. But don't worry, it's not quite going to be as in-depth as that. The main takeaway for this, and we're going to use Mephiston Red to start, is that we're going to highlight all of the red armour, leaving the dark colour in the recesses. When it comes to things like the knee pads, we just want to use the bottom half of them darker red. All the bits that are going to catch the most light, we still want to paint those with the Mephiston Red. So we're just going back over the bits we've already done. Now, if you use an oil wash or if you're really crisp with the shade, you might not have to do too much of this. But I was quite liberal because I was working through these fairly quickly to get them done for the video. So I'm just going to go back and highlight all of that with my fist in red. Next up, we're going to take Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a nice bright red. What we're looking to do with this is very similar to the previous step, is we're looking to paint this all over the areas of the model that are going to catch the most light. We're not edge highlighting with this, we're painting quite big areas, leaving the Mephiston Red and then the darker shaded Mephiston Red in the recesses. And this is really going to brighten up the scouts. So if you think about it, things like uh, the gauntlets that catch the most light, the backpack and the top of the carapace armour, that's going to catch lots of light. So just work around that, painting the Evil Sun Scarred on. It should go on in one coat, but if it's a little bit thin, you may need two. Next up, we'll start highlighting the red armor properly, and this will really help to make it pop. So the color we're going to use is Wild Rider Red, and all we're looking to do is edge highlights. We're looking to catch those raised edges, and the beauty of Space Marine armor and this Scout armor is that all you need to do is just catch the raised edges, drag the brush along them, and you get nice crisp highlights. It's really, really nice and easy and straightforward. So just work your way around focusing on the areas that you painted evil sun scarlet you don't need to put this into those deeper recesses the last highlight we'll do on the red armor is a very very small highlight we're going to use luganeth orange for this this is a very very bright orange and all we're looking to do is just add dot highlights inside the wild rider red from the previous step and we're looking to really just use it extremely sparingly only on the sharpest parts that are going to catch the most light so any sort of angled corners are perfect for this the ang the angle corner on the gauntlets absolutely spot on for this the last thing we need to do is to paint all the fatigue so if you haven't already go back and fix any mistakes with zandri dust next up i'm going to take some a shapty bone and i'm going to paint this all over the fatigues apart from the recesses what i'm going to do is leave that a shapty bone in the deep recesses and this is going to give us a really nice soft transition for the clothing now, the Ushabti bone is quite thin, so you are going to need at least two coats to get this on there. But again, just focus on the majority of the fatigues, and particularly where you've got angular folds. And there's quite a lot, because if you, think, if you look at how the models are holding their weapons, if you look at how their legs are bent, you've got some quite nice pronounced folds that you can just drag your brush along 
and get a really, really nice highlight. The last thing we need to do on the fatigues is to highlight them even more. And the color we're going to use for that is Screaming Skull, which is a very, very bright bone color. We're going to use it fairly sparingly. We're only going to use this on the extreme folds. Now, I spoke about these folds in the previous step. What we're looking to do is just drag the brush along them so we get a nice crisp highlight. And that'll give you some really nice soft fabric, which contrasts nicely with the much harder and sharper shapes that you've got on the armor. Now, if you want to put a wash on them, if you want to shade them down a little bit and get a little bit more darker color in the recesses, then I'd advise maybe taking something like Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint and mixing it maybe two to one with Contrast Medium, two parts Contrast Medium, one part Skeleton Horde, and be very sparingly with it because it'll very easily overpower the bright color that you've got in the fatigues. So there we have it. A huge thank you again to Games Workshop for sending me this out for free. And now if you are wondering how to paint the faces on the scouts, well, good news, I've got a playlist right here where you can go and learn to paint any skin color that you need to. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and a comment down below. I'll see you next time.